When I submitted my Ignite talk to Ignite Seattle, I did not expect to be giving this on the heels of the Kavanaugh hearings. It's been a tough time for a lot of people to, um, to experience. Uh, my story is that six months ago, I came forward publicly speaking on the record about my own Me Too story. I went on the record in the Huffington Post, and it was a terrifying thing to do, and a thing that I had not wanted to acknowledge publicly for 15 years. But in the process of going on the record, I learned so much about what it takes so many of these voices coming forward to share their stories. And tonight, I'm gonna to share with you the common misperceptions that people have about those who come forward and why, and uh, some of the logistics that are needed to cover if someone is going to come forward with their own story. I'm not going to talk about my own story, but it is totally okay to Google it. You can get your own iPhone and Google it if you want to. Um, but jumping into misconceptions, one, I think that there's a, a thought that we as, as survivors go to the journalists and say, hey, hey, I have a story. No, that's not how it happens. Uh, what actually happens is that perpetrators tend to leave a trail of breadcrumbs, and we are just one of those crumbs that journalists are following in a reporting research process that takes months, sometimes years. So oftentimes they contact us. Uh, and. Oftentimes we also uh, speak out anonymously, as I did in a Shine Squad post three years before I went forward and journalists contacted me then and I was like, no, no, I am not ready to speak publicly about this. The second is that people think that there's a lot of resources for us when there isn't. We have to take on the financial responsibility ourselves for many things that are involved. But eventually the weight of responsibility outweighs the weight of self-preservation that we have felt for months and years since what happened to us. Responsibility towards our community, responsibility to prevent this from happening to others, and responsibility to the truth. It is a heavy thing to come forward with this. And so I, the timetable for coming forward, I think, is triggered by a few things. External and internal factors. Externally, the journalists contacting you or um, acquaintances and coworkers who know a little bit of your story, kind of a little bit of a whisper network that happens. But internally, people start feeling social proof. The concept that as society changes and how we treat each other and how we treat victims coming forward, that it makes it a little bit easier to come forward. And horizontal activism, the idea that maybe you can't change the Trump administration or the Kavanaugh hearings as one individual, but you can speak truth about what happened to you. And so I think that's why we've seen some horizontal activism kind of pushing out. After my story broke, I wrote a blog post called Bravery Squad. It was shocking to me that people called me brave for sharing my story because I was still scared. And I, I just, gosh, there was just so much I had to do to go through it. So I documented what was needed. I was privileged to have great people giving me advice and to be given pro bono legal support of the Time's Up Legal Defense Fund, as well as PR and communications help. Most people don't know that when you are considering coming forward, there is tremendous legal liability in doing so. You could be sued for defamation and spend the rest of your money and days in, in, <laughs> in uh, getting sued, essentially. Um, but your truth, the truth, is your defense. And so in coming forward, you also need to think about things like personal security. Some women have, or their families, have been swatted in their own homes. Uh, you need a budget and emergency funds. I paid for my undisclosed location when I got out of town. And when we're doing all of this and making these sacrifices, we know that justice is, the odds of justice are slim. The likelihood that someone will go to jail or be prosecuted is quite slim. But that isn't the point. The point of this, of so many of us coming forward, is that you change, society changes. Believing victims, believing what happens, changes not just us and our stories, but policy and culture. My favorite show is The Good Place. I don't know if you like the show or know about it. One of the core components of it is that good people together change themselves for the better and change their community for the better. And I think that that's what happens right now. The Me Too movement is painful, yes, but the fact that all of you are changing is changing society 
and I think will lead to so much prevention and a better world for all of us. So thank you for being brave enough to listen to us. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.